next thing I'd like to do is continue on and talk about Rock SI for augmentation of petroelastic models. In the lithophases probability process, which is described here in its entirety, we have your elastic seismic inversion results here. We have your well logs here. And using the information in the well logs, we can construct a cross plot of PM impedance and VPBS ratio from the well log information. And then we can categorize it by lithophases type. Here in this example, we see three different groupings or categories of lithophases types. We have all water and gas. So uh, here's our water, uh, here's our oil, here's our gas over here. And for each point in the cross plot, using the probability density functions and the probability contours for each lithophases type, we can assign a probability of that particular point in, in the survey being a particular lithophases type. So in this case, we're very, very far from the gas uh, PDF, so it has a very, very low probability for gas but we're kind of in between the water and the oil, although it seems to be closer to the centroid of the PDF for the oil. So we have a higher probability for oil and a somewhat lower probability for water. And for each point in the survey, it works through this to compute a probability of each lithophases type in the entire cube. So it will create three volumes, a probability volume for gas, a probability volume for water, and a probability volume for oil. And then a fourth cube would be created, which will be the winner or the most likely lithophases type at each point in the survey. And this is done also in Rock SI. Using this technique, sometimes we observe that we have too sparse a data for a particular lithophases type, or it may not be representative of the natural reservoir variability. In other words, it may not include all litho classes that we could reasonably expect to have in this particular survey area. And it may not capture expected depth trends due to the limited interval in some of the well logs, maybe. So what can we do about that? Well, we have an option in Rock SI to augment the data sets. We could augment an existing class with very sparse data points. We could add an additional simulated lithophases classification. In this case, a very calcareous type sandstone is included here. How do we do that? Well, we take our petroelastic model. So we can take our water saturation, porosity, V-clay, and effective pressure, combining it with our petroelastic model in Monte Carlo simulation, we can output these additional data points. Now once we've done that, then we can extract our probability density functions again and go through the probability process using the Bayesian inferences and create those probability litho cubes again in this case, we would also have a probability litho cube for the consolidated sand or tight sand. Let me show you some plots where we have done this in Rock SI. We're doing it, in this particular case, lithophases type by lithophases type. So here we see measured data for the shale lithophases. And then here we see simulated data for the shale and various types of cross plots like uh, p-velocity, shear velocity, p-velocity density, p-impedance, VPBS ratio, different ways of looking at the data. Here it is for water sand with the simulated uh, water sand data with the P10, P50, and P90 PDF contours. Here's the oil sand case. And here's a new one, gas sand. There was not any gas sand, but in this particular case, we simulated for the gas sand using an appropriate petroelastic model for the gas sand. So we'll, that's good, but once we've done this, we want to examine more about the probabilities of lithophases from litho SI. 
which is another uh, module in Hampson Russell software. So what we've done is we've taken our data points into Litho SI and we have created probability density functions in Litho SI that we're going to use to create the probability volumes. Now one thing I need to mention is that we can display different information here. I can display well logs. I can display upscaled well logs. What that means is upscaled to seismic resolution. And I can also display composite traces around a well. And I can select how many traces around that well I want to include in the cross plot. This is really valuable because if I have that undrilled structure without any wet evidence from well logs, but I have inversion results, I'm going to want to go over there and create a pseudo well location say close to the apex of the structure and then I'm going to want to look a, take a look at defining probability density functions from the inversion results using the knowledge and the information that I have discovered using the template and making those adjustments in the petroelastic model and parameterization for the rock for the petroelastic model and observing the, the movement in the template. So in that case, here we have the drilled structure. This is the points. Remember the in the rock physics uh, template, when we had deeper depth of burial and higher pore pressure, we saw points moving down here. Or in the shallower structure, we saw the points moving up in this direction. So if I were to make a pseudo well location at the apex of that structure 25 kilometers away, I know it's deeper, I would expect to observe data points breaking out in this direction down here. And if I observe that, I'm going to want to take those as oil sand and then run this process. But let's go ahead and run it on this scenario right here because we have three default block structures in this case, in this example, and they're all about the same depth of burial. Now one thing that we get is we get a confusion matrix. You remember that we had a lithophases log classification at the well? Well from these PDFs I can take that same information and I can create a classification log from the PDFs and compare it to the petrophysical analysis for lithophases classification. And I can see that it's very similar here. And then here is the results in an additional well here. We get some numeric classification confusion here. Uh, in the cold, in uh, this case, we see 100 percent, no confusion at all. Here we have 99.5 in the shale, 77 in the water sand, 86 in the oil sand, and 90 percent in the calcite. Now one thing that we produce volume, the winner, is the most probable lithophases type. And this is a section view from that volume with the wells. So here we have this well with the good oil sands here. We see the corresponding distribution of oil sands as we move laterally away from the well in this section view. Here we see oil sands here and we see the occurrence of the oil sands prediction of the most likely the, the facies type being the oil sands here with the water sands down here. We need to understand where to drill wells, so let's take a look at it in this way. So this is in the displays from Litho SI module, and this is a map of the sum of the probabilities of oil sand in the interval of interest. You can see that we have a summation of very high probabilities here, here, and here, and some lower probabilities up here as far as the summation. If we look at the oil sand probability uh, cube in a section view, passing north and south along this line, we see this accumulation of, of hydrocarbons indicated as high oil sand probability. Here we see the most probable lithophases type indicating the oil sand here. And then down below we have an uncertainty coefficient. Now this is important because if I only have two lithophases types and I know the probability of one, 
I intuitively know the probability of the other. But if I have a mixture, maybe four, five, or six different lithophases types, just because I know the probability of the most likely lithophases, I don't know if that's 28%, 30%, 90%, 98%. It could still be the winner if we have a if we have five or six lithophases, uh, I could have the winner with a probability of 28%, which is not very certain. So here we have an uncertainty coefficient that will let us know just very quickly in a volume view, a section view from the uncertainty volume, how confident we are or how unconfident. So here we have very, very high oil sand probabilities. We're going to have lower uncertainty. Here we're taking a look at it in a north-south line. Let's take a look at it in an east-west line. When we look at it this way, we understand more about the reservoir architecture. We understand that these are fault blocks and there's been an erosional surface at the surface in the top. The seal was laid down and then subsequent migration of hydrocarbons into these sands. And this is why we have this appearance dipping to the north with these fault blocks, one, two, three, as we go through here. So this geologically makes sense. It's a indicated oil sand probability. And if this structure were the discovery well and these other structures had not been drilled, I would pretty well know how I want to develop this field. This will help me make those drilling decisions by Change, uh, converting your elastic properties from inversion into meaningful maps uh, drilling decisions. Thank you very much for your attention.